Hello, my name is Mark Allen. I'd like to show you an invention that Mr. Tesla created at a time when much of us were still without electricity and living by candlelight or gaslight. Mr. Tesla had this vision that if you create an electrical energy with very, very high voltage and very, very high frequency, just perhaps you might be able to send it through space. So without any further ado, let me show you what greeted Mr. Tesla when he turned the Tesla coil on for the first time. electrical energy through space. So he wanted to do some more experiments. Let's try sending electricity through space over myself to somewhere else. conducted over my skin to the other side to the fluorescent tubes to my right. I did not feel any shock, yet there was just enough radio frequency energy to excite the gas in the fluorescent tube. Now let's go a little bit further. Now, as 
tried to, you know, escort my date, my lady for the night, from the city where the Tesla coil is to my home, and the bulb went out halfway home. That would not make a very impressive date. But what's happening is, the energy gets weaker as you get further away from the Tesla coil. The bulb went out about 10 feet away from the coil. Now, what if our house was 30 feet away? Can you guess how many times we have to raise the energy of that Tesla coil so I can escort my date all the way home? which is three times the distance than where we were when the bulb went out. Well, the true answer is 27 times the power, because as you move further away, the energy gets less by an inverse cube of the distance. We didn't know it then, but we know now that when you're this close to the transmitter, you're in what's called near-field radio waves. It's a difference between those radio waves and the radio waves that you have when you receive on your radio from far away from the transmitter. But that's going to mean, if you think about it, that we're going to have to put one really large Tesla coil here in downtown Bellingham. Now, here I'm about to show you why I was fired by the quarterback of the Seattle Seahawks from my job as a ballerina or cheerleader. Here is my baton. My career as a baton or cheerleader for the Seattle Seahawks was cut short quite well. The reason that baton was kind of cut short, or lit only halfway, is because electricity follows the easiest path to the other potential, in this case ground. Electric, electric energy was broadcast from the coil to the gas tube. The energy flowed along the gas tube until it got close to my hand. I am a quicker pass to ground than the other end of the fluorescent tube. So therefore, my baton was lit only halfway. Now, I'm about to show you why I flunked military boot camp. Chandelier. 
Not only would my chandelier behave funny, think about all those neon signs in Times Square in New York City. Half of them will be out because the other half, the bulb that's closest to the Tesla coil, also acts like a shield, preventing the energy from flowing beyond to a bulb right behind it. Now this is going to be really interesting because let's say I'm your neighbor and you don't like me because, I don't know why, because I'm different. All you need to do to, create, to make my life miserable is to stand in front of my house like this, holding hands with everybody else who doesn't like me and all my lights will go out. So now I'm about to show you a phenomenon that was discovered that will put an enormous challenge to Mr. Tesla's dream, but is an enormous lesson in safety during a lightning storm. First of all, before I do anything, I'm going to briefly turn the coil on, and I want you to watch the two fluorescent bulbs. As you saw, the two fluorescent bulbs on either side of the coil, they lit up. That's expected because they're close to the coil. So now what I'm going to do, here's a glass bell. Glass is an insulator. Electricity will not flow along glass. Glass also is watertight and airtight. If I wear this as a rain hat, my head will stay dry. Let's put this over the blue fluorescent bulb to your right, just like that. On the other side, we have a brass cage. Brass is a conductor. Electricity will flow along brass. Unlike glass, which is an insulator, this also has openings. And if I was to wear this as a rain hat, water would get inside and I'll get wet. So let's put this over the orange fluorescent bulb like this. Now even leave the birdie door open so I can reach inside and touch the orange fluorescent bulb. Now, before I turn this on, how many of you would guess that the bulb inside the glass bell would light up? And how many of you guess would the bulb inside the bird cage light up? Now, very important, as I do this experiment, I want you to carefully watch what happens at this end of the fluorescent bulb in my hand. First of all, when I bring it close to the glass bell, and when I bring it close to the brass cage. And when I do so, also watch carefully what happens over to my right. So here we go. Quite simple. 
Think about the antenna on your radio or in your cell phone. The antenna kind of stretches out like this. The radio waves hit the antenna and it gathers that energy. And that energy turns into an electrical current that flows through the antenna, which is a wire, to the radio. Here we have a wire cage. This is behaving similar to an antenna. The electricity flows along the wire of the cage. Yet the electricity, the radio waves don't go inside. It's inside the cage. There is no difference in potential from one part of the cave to the other. But therefore, there are no radio waves. Electrical arcs will hit the metal on the cave, but will not continue inside. Again, this is a Faraday cage. Now, did you all see the electrical arc between the cage and the fluorescent bulb? And did you see the bulb light up to my right? That behavior is exactly the same as if you were flying in an airplane through a thunderstorm. If you're in an airplane during a thunderstorm and the lightning hits the airplane, the electricity will flow along the shell of the airplane, which acts like a Faraday cage, and the lightning will continue out the other side. Yet you are very safe inside. And I mean safe from lightning, obviously, you're not, you're not safe from the nasty turbulence, but that's a whole different topic. And that's a whole different thing to talk about. Now, if you're in your car during a thunderstorm, here's the lesson. Please do me a favor and keep all your arms and your legs and your head inside the vehicle. If you do so, the vehicle will act like a Faraday cage. Electric Lightning will strike the car, electricity will flow along the car, over the wet tires and ground. And as soon as you stick your hand outside the window to wave at your girlfriend walking down the street, electricity will strike your hand, a massive amount of current will blow along your arm to the car, and you're going to get hurt. Likewise, if you're like myself during college years, and you like to lie down in the back seat of your Volkswagen Bug and stick both of your legs out the window, the same thing will happen. So again, please keep all your limbs and your head inside the car during a thunderstorm. That's the lesson. Now, Mr. Tesla's dream could not be realized because of these experiments I just did. However, Small parts of the dream are slowly coming into realization now. For example, the latest um, telephones and the latest computer tablets can be charged by placing them on or adjacent to the charger with no wires. However, they have to be very, very close. And the transmission of energy is strictly magnetic. However, it is a tiny, realization of a part of Mr. Tesla's dream. Tesla coils are still very much alive now. They're used for education, just what we just did now, and research to research high voltage and especially lightning. We do not know a lot about lightning. And lastly, they're used for entertainment. Behind me, we have an very big Tesla coil, and also behind me, we have a Tesla, a, 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 sorry, we have a Faraday cage that's big enough for you to get into. So therefore, you can take selfies of yourself while you're being struck by a 10-foot bolt of lightning. We do that for our special 230 Mega Zapper show that we have every Saturday and Sunday. So that's it. If you want to know more about Tesla coil, especially how do they work and how to make one, please come up to me afterwards. I'll be glad to tell you what I know. Thank you very much.